Eric Darling here, Darling Data, doing Darling Data stuff with SQL Server. Um, apparently, I have to get on an airplane today. <clears throat> what day is today? I guess we'll find out because we're going to talk about dates. <laughs> I'm dumb. So uh, I, I've, I've talked about some similar stuff on this uh, on the Chan before. I hate myself, uh, but um, I'm going to talk about things in a slightly different way here. Uh, mostly because I still see a lot of screw ups and weirdness and sort of bugginess with um, with date math and date function queries, and I just want to kind of talk through a little bit of what goes on with date math and date functions. So uh, first and foremost is a giant pet peeve of mine, at least in, in, le at least in recent years, because uh, for a long time I kind of had no idea what, a, a pro what an issue this sort of thing could cause. But the uh, more recent years and experiences have taught me that uh, relying on implicit conversion of data types can really cause strange incorrect results bugs. And you don't want to do that <laughs> for you or anyone, really. Why would you do that to a person? Be nice, be kind. So, um, and I see a lot of date math queries where people use zero as shorthand for 1900.0101. And of course this works, like in very simple circumstances, but in other circumstances, uh, you can run into some big issues with this. Um, it, would be, it would be a bit too much to gin up a demo to show you what those issues are. Just trust me, do yourself the favor of not being lazy and using this shorthand of zero for, to replace 1900.0101. Uh, and we should probably make a note here, say, uh, just so no, there's no confusion. Do this instead. Did. There we go. That looks better now. So uh, these two queries will do about the same thing. Right? They're going to give me uh, adding 45,477 days to 1900.0101, which gives us the exact same value for both of them. We get the same results back here, but, uh, you know, that... Like I said, there are more complicated circumstances where uh, you might you might hit some weird bugs with re relying on this implicit conversion from zero to nineteen hundred. So always, please explicitly do this. Uh, maybe even like say convert date or date time nineteen hundred oh one oh one to make extra sure. Uh, I I I think I've gone through all of my GitHub repo and replaced uh, any place where I may may have made that error in the past. Um, but uh, if you see anything in there, uh, please let me know and yell at me. So another thing that I also see quite a bit of is when people need to do things like uh, compare, like, you know, they, they want to go back a certain number of days or months, and they end up doing some, some really shoddy date math like this. Now, this, this won't be, cause incorrect results, but, you know, in the presence of a half-decent index, uh, performance is not going to be great with this because you're performing the date math functionality on the column, and you're comparing that to just like this scalar thing over here, and your life for the for the SQL Server query turns out a whole lot better when you do something like this, where you compare like the column in the table to the result of date math operating only on whatever parameter or variable you pass in. So if we look, just look at the results of these two queries, and I stuck recompile hints on there so we don't have to deal with the um, the local variable effect with anything. Uh, you know, the first query where I do the date math on, on the column, that takes about two seconds. We have to scan the whole column. No one is happy. On the second one where I do the date math on the, right, there's a column compared to the date math. Uh, this that does an index seek and runs for about 100 milliseconds. So that's a much better way of doing things. Uh, where it gets a little tougher is when you need to compare uh, columns that are in different tables. Right, so saying where p dot creation date uh, is the date dip between let's say let's say this query well this query specifically is looking for posts where like someone came along like a year later and commented on them right so someone like just wandered in drunk and was just like this is out of date now uh, something like that and like like if this were, if these were just two columns in a single table you could of course uh, what do you call it. Uh, create a computed column on them, index it, and be fine. But since they're in different tables, really the only way to do that without, like, you know, creating a new table and storing both sets of data or completely screwing up the design even more of the post table and some, somehow adding comment dates in there, which is 
blows my mind how much how little sense that would make uh <laughs> it gave me, gave me a twitch um you know like you the only really the only realistic thing you could do would be to create an indexed view that would you know uh give you the results of this back all at once now this i i, I get it i'm with you this is not a very useful indexed view right because we're just unless you just need the count we should probably involve some other things in here like probably like the the id column from the post table and the comments table so we could like look those things up uh in the in the base tables <laughs> something like that uh but this is just one quick way of showing you that you know an index view can be a pretty good way of uh of making the the non-sargable uh, a little less painful um Another thing that where, where date math gets sort of weird on people is the date diff function. So uh, what a lot of people are surprised by with the date diff function is that it does not actually look for uh, like uh, the the duration necessarily. Uh, like like the date diff in years does not look for like a twelve month difference. The date diff in month does not look for like a twenty eight or thirty or 29 or 31 day difference uh the date different days does indeed look look for a one day difference but that's the but you know if if you know we were to get into a situation with like you know let's say that we were looking at like 12 31 at like uh 11 59 and 20 20 01 01 at like 00 uh 01 uh or even just like Zero, zero, zero. Actually, I don't even know if that's going to work. We, we're we're going to find out together. Uh, yeah. So, like, you know, there's a one-minute difference between these, but SQL Server's like, no, it's a full day. And there's, like, you know, a, a one-day difference between uh, these, but SQL Server's like, nope, that's a full month. And, you know, again, there's a one-year difference between these, but SQL Server's like, no, it's a full year. So the date diff function is a little weird in that way. Uh, and so you have to kind of be careful about being precise about what what it is you're looking for all right so if you look at like this query and you're trying to figure out like all you want to do is get like this count that we were talking about that's about twenty thousand rows if you wanted to write that using different logic right if you wanted to write that uh in a different way you would have to do something like this where you would have to add a year minus one and then flatten the year, flatten the creation date column to the year. And it just gets very, very complicated to try and replicate uh, that logic with like explicit query syntax. Um, like just doing simple as simple, something as simple as this just doesn't work, right? If you look at this, the re results of this, that's a whole bunch more rows than we got from either, either one of those. So this isn't like, you know, depending on what exactly you're looking to uh, count up and return in these things, you need to be really careful with how you write these queries. The performance, of course, doesn't matter, but the results here are different and they, they, do, make, they do matter. Now, if we were to look at some of this stuff in here, um, the results wouldn't look too weird for the most part, but if you kind of start scrolling down a little bit in the results, and you look at sort of really down to really down at the bottom is where the interesting stuff is. So where SQL Server is telling you that there's a one year difference between things, uh, it's also telling you that there's a 23 month difference. So there's a, like almost two year difference there, right? Uh, and there's the 723, and I'm not going to figure out how many 30s go into 723, but it, it might start to creep up above these things. So you know, I, I realize that these things are documented, and you know these. And, if you if you're keen on reading the documentation you might think this video is stupid and be like oh the video is documented stuff a lot of people don't get that involved and it's not until someone tells them that stuff gets weird that they start to worry about stuff getting weird so uh at the end of the day um when it comes to doing date math one please use explicit dates do not use numbers like zero to sub in for dates and rely on, rely on an implicit conversion for that um, please don't do date math on columns as much as you can avoid it. Do date math on like whatever parameters and expressions you need to and compare the column to that. Uh, if you need to do date math across tables, uh, 
uh, indexed views can be a good way of um, making that a little bit less painful. And if you need to use the date diff function to figure out what span of time exists between things, uh, just be very careful in, in what, your, what, what your assumption is about exactly how much time has to be between two things in order for their for, for date for date diff to tell you that like you know there's a month or a year and a day between them because again going back to this you know there's a whole bunch of stuff in here where you know uh you know like like yes i i agree go away github desktop there there is uh, you know, 2020 is a, is a year ahead of 2019, but like th there's really a one day difference between these dates. Uh, you know, and you know, there is a, a the, the first of the year, the first month of the year is a month ahead of, is a, a month different from the last month of the year. But th again, there's only a one day difference. And, you know, I, I agree that, you know, the, the first of the year is indeed a day ahead of the last day of the year, but there is only a one minute difference between these. So just be careful, like, like be very specific about exactly how much time has to exist between two things before it is considered a one, one uh, like a month or a year or a day difference. You, may, you might need to use like uh, seconds uh, to, to figure out it, like you might you have to do the date diff in seconds and then figure out how many seconds are in the span of time you care about, whether it's a day or three days or a month or like how many days in a month you care about or, uh, you know, like the number of seconds in a year. You might need to do a lot of that math to figure out exactly what it is you need to be precise about it because date diff on its own is not very precise. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope you read the documentation in the future so you can call me stupid for explaining parts of things that how things work or something like that. Um, I, of course, I, I thank you very, very deeply for watching. This is my last day on earth. This is the last thing I record. Gosh, that'd be sad. So I, I think I, I better not. Maybe I should record something else real quick after this. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, if you like this sort of SQL Server content, um, or you like this video, uh, you can like and subscribe to me and my channel, and you can get notifications when I drop the SQL Server content, and you can leave me likes and comments when I do, and then everyone's happier, right? Hmm? Yeah, it's cool stuff. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching.